Legend has it that in the distant Middle Ages, a group of hundred-meter giant elephants invaded the human world. Faced with the terrifying destructive power of the giant elephants, the soldiers were utterly powerless. However, all of this was actually a plot orchestrated by Greybeard. He used black magic to control the giant elephants, and together with the Wizard Legion, launched an aggressive war against humanity. Fortunately, there was another great sorcerer named Merlin, who crafted a holy sword with the staff of the Wizard King. He entrusted the Lake Fairy to deliver the holy sword into the hands of Uther, in the face of the massive army of giants. Uther showed no fear, he leaped from the city wall alone and bravely infiltrated the enemy camp, and then gripped the hilt with both hands to use the holy sword ruling. A move to solve the evil Greybeard, the out-of-control giant elephants began to rampage, and the wizard legion scattered in retreat. After the war, Uther became renowned and officially crowned as king with the support of the people, but never thought that everyone obeyed him Uther, but his own brother did not. It turned out that Vortigern had coveted the throne for a long time. In order to gain powerful abilities, he made a secret deal with the water demon. The deal was to kill his beloved and gentle wife with his own hands. Using her blood to obtain terrifying dark powers, Vortigern transformed into a scythe demon and froze through the queen's body with one shot. Faced with such a terrifying demon, Uther had no choice but to leave his young son behind and engage in a deadly battle with his own brother. The battle is about to start. The clash of swords sparked a dazzling holy light. After several rounds, Uther's strength gradually waned, and he shouted for his son to escape. Then, in order to keep the sword from falling into the hands of the devil, he threw the sword into the sky and pierced his body and then turned into a reef and sank to the bottom of the sea. After Uther's death, Vortigern successfully ascended to the throne. To solidify his rule, Vortigern formed a massive army of black-armored soldiers. He massacred warriors who resisted and ruled his kingdom with tyranny. But he overlooked a major pitfall, Uther's youngest son Arthur. Years ago, Arthur had drifted downstream on a small boat and was rescued by a few kind-hearted women. At a tender age, he wandered through the streets and alleys, learning various survival skills. In his youth, he honed his muscles in the fighting arenas and grew up to become a notorious street brawler, but witnessing the gruesome death of his parents in his childhood, he always refused to recall that memory, so much so that now he still does not know his own life. Until one day, the sea level outside the castle suddenly dropped rapidly, along with it, the long-lost holy sword that had been submerged for years resurfaced. But what shocked everyone was that no one could pull it out. Vortigern, however, immediately recognized it as Uther's holy sword. An ominous feeling surged within him, and he sought out the water demon for answers. Now he realizes that Uther's youngest son is still alive and that Arthur is the first heir to the throne. This directly threatened Vortigern's reign. To find Arthur, he ordered a nationwide sword-pulling test. Arthur, who was unaware of the test, was excited to come to the test, but did not know that it was a setup for himself. Arthur gripped the sword hilt with both hands, and in a moment a bizarre scene occurred. A burst of holy light suddenly erupted from the hilt, causing the earth to tremble. Amidst the astonished gazes of onlookers, Arthur gradually exerted his strength and pulled the holy sword out of the rock. Upon witnessing this, Vortigern was first astonished, then immediately ordered Arthur to be captured. However, before they could lay hands on him, Arthur collapsed on the spot because he was not yet able to harness the immense power of the holy sword. When he woke up, he found himself locked in the royal dungeon, it was from his uncle Vortigern's own mouth that Arthur learned about his true lineage for the first time, but he could never have imagined that his so-called own uncle would execute him in public as a way to consolidate his rule. Just as the executioner was about to carry out the sentence, Guinevere, dressed in a blue robe from a distance, unleashed her magic and controlled a hawk, obstructing the executioner. Not only that, but all the animals on the scene were also under her control, causing chaos. Meanwhile, Amidst the commotion, accomplices in the crowd rushed forward and rescued Arthur, they jumped off a cliff and successfully escaped the execution site. Led by Guinevere, Arthur arrived in a cave. The people here are all his father Uther's old men. They have been waiting for Arthur to appear and overthrow Vortigern's brutal rule. And now, their primary mission is to help Arthur truly master the power of the Holy Sword. Thus, he was thrown into the land of darkness, where vicious creatures reside. Arthur fought venomous snakes wrestled with large rats in the stream, and battled the massive bats, which nearly took him away. After enduring these hellish trials, when Arthur once again grasped the holy sword, his memories from the past came flooding back. He was overwhelmed with grief as he remembered his parents' tragic deaths at the hands of the scythe demon, all in an effort to protect him. But when he returned to the camp, bruised and battered, 
he learned that Vortigern, in order to force his appearance, had burned everything he owned, and even slaughtered his friends. Arthur's anger reached its peak, and he decided to assassinate Vortigern to avenge his comrades. They laid an ambush in the city, preparing to shoot Vortigern from a hundred meters away. However, everything went too smoothly, arousing Arthur's suspicions. Fixed eyes. The distant Vortigern is actually a double, but at this point the flying arrows have been shot out of their position exposed. Soon, Arthur's group was surrounded in a courtyard. The Black Armored Army burst through the door and charged in, and Arthur and his allies fought desperately against them, but still not. This will definitely be a total loss of troops. At this moment, Arthur knew he had to step up. Arthur, with both hands tightly gripping the Holy Sword, suddenly caused a sandstorm to rise around him, as if the whole world came to a standstill. In the midst of the sandstorm, Arthur wielded the Holy Sword, unleashing a devastating power. Even the mighty Black Armored Army fell beneath the Holy Sword's might. With a powerful shockwave, the entire space was left in ruins. When the dust settled, they saw that all the Black Armored Army had perished. Arthur's companions, shocked by the display, realized the terrifying power of the Holy Sword. Afterward, Arthur returned to the camp with his injured companions. Late at night, he sat by the bed, lost in thought. He remembered the companions who had helped him along the way, as well as his foster mother who had saved him, all of whom had now lost their lives. It seemed that all of this had started because of the Holy Sword. Arthur stood on the cliff, throwing the Holy Sword into the lake, and then ran through the forest in a frenzy, releasing the pain in his heart. Eventually, he couldn't run any longer and knelt down in a swamp. Suddenly, a hand reached out from below and pulled Arthur down. It turned out to be the Fairy of the Lake, her other hand holding the burning Holy Sword. And then the Fairy let Arthur see the future scene. If he didn't accept the Holy Sword, the entire world would become a wasteland, and people would suffer greatly. At that moment, Arthur finally had an awakening. He picked up the Holy Sword and let out a resounding roar. This was his destiny, his responsibility. Arthur decided to no longer escape. He first had Guinevere use a spell to get a giant python to sneak up on Vortigern, only to be cut off with a sword. Good thing this is just foreplay. There was an even larger giant snake that rushed into the hall and unleashed a frenzied massacre. Meanwhile, Arthur slowly drew the holy sword. It was time to fight back. The desperate Vortigern ran to the water demon for help, and the condition was the blood of a beloved one. So, Vortigern found his eldest daughter and held her in his arms, plunging a dagger into her body. With immense grief, Vortigern sacrificed his final glimmer of light to the darkness. He once again transformed into the scythe demon and met Arthur on the top of the tower. With a casual toss of a fireball, Arthur was sent flying several tens of meters away. The two then launched the final showdown. The two sides played very intense. Although Arthur fought with all his might, he was still unable to defeat the demon. Eventually, he was struck down heavily and lost consciousness. In Arthur's mind, the final piece of the puzzle came together. The scythe demon who killed his parents was none other than Vortigern. Suddenly, Arthur awoke, and the new grudges and old animosity ignited all his strength. Arthur fought the demon once again, but this time, he had undergone a transformation. He had become a demon himself. Arthur's attacks became increasingly powerful, and in the end, an arrow pierced the scythe demon's chest. Vortigern fell to the ground, reverting to his true form. In the final chapter of the story, Arthur formed the Knights of the Round Table. Arthur was officially crowned by the people, and at this moment Arthur really became King Arthur. He is the epic legend as the people's desire. Is the exile in the city still become the hero of the world? Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.